Welcome back to the farm. We tore down this front pasture fencing earlier this week and now we are redoing it. <laughs> as we are redoing all of our uh, pasture fencing. It's gonna be much better fencing. It'll be able to keep everybody in. The goats, cows, pigs, dogs. <laughs> you wanna know one thing that we've learned? What? To start doing? What? Putting our dirt pile on the outside of the fence line. Oh, Instead that's of smart. on the inside. Smart. Thought about that one yesterday. How are you guys doing? Doing good, and yourself? Yeah, I'm doing perfect this time. You're doing perfect. We got a lot of fun stuff going on. It's a lot of hard work, and we've got a lot of waiting for batteries to recharge for the auger because we have a battery powered auger. Well, basically what we're doing is high tensile five strand lines, uh, or five lines. So it'll be six, 12, 18, 27, 39 inches. So again, based on our um, herd, that should be good to keep everybody in. And we are doing proper corner braces this time. If you recall or ever saw our old fencing, we did not do any proper bracing in corners, it was just a single post in the ground and we started to see over time those lean in as you would expect when you put tension on it. And we are also leveraging uh, timeless fence posts. Anyways, this is a PVC fence post. So basically, I don't need any insulators. This is an electrified fence line, which means if it touches anything that is conductive to electricity, it'll ground out. So you don't want it touching metal, wood, anything green basically. So this being a plastic post uh, is the insulator. So we don't have to worry about insulators, anything grounding out like that. And basically we'll just run the lines straight through here. And it does look, it will look like a nice looking fence when all is said and done. So there used to be a black wooden fence running along there. We ripped that out. There's more black fencing over there. We're gonna be pulling that down. Basically it's all being swapped over to this high tensile five line electrified fencing and it is going to be great i'm super excited it's going to look nice it's going to look cohesive up until this point all of the fencing around this place has been different in some way shape or form this is all going to be cohesive my wife is very pleased about that yes Whew. okay you got it and there we go we don't need that anymore thank you your deer nice <laughs> Look at that, problem solved. How's it going? You've got the two posts set four feet in the ground and then we'll run a wire from up here down to this bottom corner. So when tension is put on this going in that direction, it wants to pull this post in, which pushes this post horizontally into this post, which because we have that tension wire here, it basically, redistributes all that force to the bottom of this at ground level so it keeps it nice and straight versus letting it lean over. Definitely not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's a great place. Yes, the internet is a wonderful resource and we have, uh, like she said, I've done a lot of fencing over the last couple of years and realized what's not good. So now I'm doing it properly. So basically what we've done, because these are PVC plastic, they do bend, which means the first time we tried putting this in with a standard like manual post pounder, it was flexing all over the place. It wasn't really going in. But I'd seen somebody, a video of somebody using one of these. Basically it's just a speed square made out of wood, much larger than your standard speed square. So basically what we're doing, I've got some, um, knots tied in with paracord basically we'll drop it in so it holds it tight vertical and then that keeps it nice and straight as we pound it in with the uh gas powered post pounder basically you want it to be like with the grade of the fence just because otherwise if it's not you might have a string a line trying to go up like this which is going to get caught on either side of this hole versus if this goes with the grade, it just can feed right through. Because essentially what you want is, you want the line to be able to move within here, 
so you can tighten it so if something falls on it it doesn't snap the line just it has some of that flexibility in it Okay, so right now we're basically putting the tension line between these posts. So you can see we've already done it here and we've done a couple up there. Keys that I've learned, leave the, this is called a spinning jenny, leave that in the back of the golf cart and take it where you need to because it saves so much time and energy because with a fully loaded 4,000 foot <laughs> roll of wire there, that's like 120 pounds, give or take. So what we're doing is basically just pulling this Now we're gonna do two full wraps in a, um, what's that, figure eight pattern. And you gotta make sure you're holding on to this, otherwise it will unwind. Next up, we've got crimps. To basically tie this wire together, When we put the rebar in, we had this sticking out a little bit, like an inch or so. That's to get this proper angle, because that's ultimately what is giving this strength. Then, so that sits up there, down on this side, we've got uh, a nail. The last step here is putting tension on this line. As you can see, this one we had some issues trying to pound it in, so there's a gap no, there. And not really a gap there, but once we put tension, it's going to pull these posts together, make that nice and snug. Three quarter inch, half inch, keep going, half inch, and you're, oh, you're hitting awesome. at the bottom. So that's nice and tight. Yeah. Excellent. So now, air, Harry. you can help with this part. Perfect, and I'll let that tension off, and boom. So this post is wobbly because we didn't actually set it because there was that gap. So we knew it was gonna need to move, and I didn't wanna set it to the point that it wouldn't actually be able to pull in very well. This is, uh... Say hi. Hi. You haven't really said hi. <laughs> How's everybody you're, been? You're everyone's favorite person. So. That's a given. <laughs> so dinner tonight is the last of the store-bought steak on the farm. All... Is this no, no, this is store-bought steak. Okay, good. <laughs> you don't have to wait Okay. Uh, yeah, we sent a cow to slaughter, so... Now we have our one of our own cows in our freezer. It's the first one. The kids are actually have been much better about it than uh, what we expected. So oh. we'll see what it comes to when we actually pull it out of the freezer for a meal. If we had just bought a cow that was seven hundred and like sixty some pounds, it's fifty-five, I think. Yeah, seven hundred and fifty-five pounds. So and then their cow was. That's, 360. that's hanging weight, 360. Yeah. 360. Ours was a dairy cow. Ours Yours was a beef cow. Ours was a beef cow. Yeah. So this is the first line that we finished uh, about a week ago, a week and a half ago. And there's already a few things with this line that I realized I did not properly account for, such as the height of the H. Um, <laughs> as you can see, this line was perfectly in line there. So that kind of interrupted. So up front, what we were doing today, I actually Eek. raised this up. So it should be halfway basically between these top two lines. But more or less, this is exactly what the fence is gonna look like. Six, 12, 18, 27, 39. So you got six inch between each of those, nine inch and 12 inch. This is the very first line that we ever ran with this style. Um, I've learned a They're lot. still shaking. Yeah. We should note that we have Nubians. If you have Nigerian dwarves, yeah. good luck. Nigerian dwarves will not at least based on the ones that we've experienced, they wouldn't stay in this. With the Nubians, 
that we have now, they stay in much nicer and much easier than what the uh, Nigerian dwarves did. So this should work for us. Uh, like I said, also, well, our pigs are used to electric, so they should stay in this. So basically, we're gonna be able to move everybody through any of the pastures, which is gonna be really nice. Basically, everything that I've learned <laughs> primarily came from Greg Judy if you haven't heard of him and you want to get into farming or ranching like definitely check out Greg Judy he's a wonderful resource that's basically it welcome back or well hi well we're welcome us back I don't know I don't know that's weird but anyways hope you guys enjoyed this maybe maybe we might uh try and be a little more regular with some of this stuff that'll be it for today we'll see you guys next time